So, like I said, we are switching back to a little bit of our regularly scheduled programming now that Corona is supposedly hitting its apex and it's all downhill from here, but in a good way. <laughs> now, something that I had always planned on talking about before everything was fatigue. Anyone with chronic illness, autoimmune disease, cancer, I mean, you name it. If you have any sort of ongoing illness, fatigue is going to play a big part in it, period. Now, healthy individuals hear that word and they think, Oh, uh, like a bad night's sleep? No. Oh, like when you need that extra afternoon cup of coffee? Definitely not. Oh, so it's like when you just need that hour at the end of the day to unwind and read a book and have a glass of wine? Not even close, okay? It's hard to put into words what fatigue means to people who live with it every single day because if you don't experience it yourself, there's almost no way for someone who doesn't to understand just how heavy and soul-crushing and draining it can be and the black hole level suck of motivation, energy, and willpower that this type of fatigue produces. So I thought, how can we illustrate this to the layperson? And after some lengthy discussions and back and forth with myself, I came up with this. Here's what we're going to do. Throughout this video, you're going to see messages come up on the bottom of the screen and I'll say it. And every time another factor adds to the fatigue, we're going to take another weight and put it in the backpack. Yeah. So, now, imagine this video is equal to the span of, I don't know, a few hours in your day, right? And everything we're doing is what you would normally do throughout your day, and we're going to see how heavy the backpack gets by the time the video ends, okay? Sound good? Yes? No? I don't really care. Let's start with five pounds in the sack. Okay. Okay, fatigue. The chronic kind. From what I can tell, it really has three separate components. Tiredness, an increased drain of energy, and a lack of motivation. Now, I know what you're saying, uh, but Dan, all those things are the same thing. A doy. And to that I say, shut up and let me finish. I know those things sound similar. Trust me. But they're actually three separate components that act in concert to make chronic fatigue so devastating. Oh, wait. Oh, what? Oh, I see that I've just gone into a fight with my imaginary significant other, which means another weight goes into the bag. I think we'll do five pounds, yeah, because it's that same stupid fight we always get into about emptying the bathroom garbage. I mean, really, it's like the leaning tower of dirty cotton balls in there. Anyway, let's talk about tiredness. Tiredness is the facet of fatigue that most people are acquainted with, and it's exactly what you think it is. An extreme form of tiredness that makes you want to sleep all day, and I mean a slumber that would make old Rip Van Winkle himself, or as he's known now, Wink the King of RVs, yeah, apparently over the dealership, anyway, make old Rip himself jealous. Yeah, that level of tired. Sleep 10 hours a day? No problem. Snore through a dump truck falling off the top of the Empire State Building? Piece of cake. Not wake up if someone starts sawing your arm off? Yeah, you'd probably wake up for that one. But not until about halfway through. Not until about halfway through. See what I mean? So, what's the remedy? Most people immediately go, oh, oh, pick me, pick me, I know the answer, teacher. Yes, you in the front with the Geology Rocks t-shirt. Oh, the answer is, go to bed earlier and get more sleep. Oh, you simple idiot, if it were only that easy. But that's what most people think, that just going to bed earlier or getting more sleep is going to alleviate that system-wide tiredness that's baked in to someone with chronic illness or chronic fatigue. And it's just not a viable solution. Now, of course, no one wants to waste their day sleeping, and chronically ill and disabled people are no different. <sighs> We want to be productive, we want to contribute, so having this exhaustion hold us back is physically and mentally devastating. Okay, next, let's talk about the increased energy drain. It's, uh, well, wait, oh, I can't get my medicine at the pharmacy because they're out of stock and they don't know when it's going to be in? Oh, man, that's another five pounds in the back. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. Boy, okay. The increased energy drain is a lesser known facet, but no less crushing than the others. Normally, a healthy person would take a certain amount of effort to do something like, uh, I don't know, say, uh, mow the lawn, right? 
But when you suffer from fatigue, your energy drains away at a much faster rate. And suddenly, halfway through an uncut lawn, you realize, I just can't do it anymore. And you have to leave your lawn uh, looking like the, when your toddler got a hold of the clippers and shaved half the dog. Yeah, the energy just drains faster than cheap vodka at a frat party, and you know that's gone before you're halfway through. Yeah, it also means that... what what Oh, wait, hold on. I gotta take out the trash. And that is physically going to take a toll on me. Oh boy, another five pounds is a good representation of that, I think. So into the bag it goes. Oh boy. Okay. Oh, I think we're up to what? Oh, 20 pounds already? We're not even halfway done. <sighs> Starting to feel it. It's getting hard to concentrate. As I was saying, this energy drain also means it takes an immense amount of effort to start any new project, especially when you know there's a large chance you won't finish it. And it's not like people who are chronically fatigued are any less susceptible to feelings of guilt and worthlessness when we leave something undone. No, we feel just as guilty and irresponsible as any person, maybe even more so, because we end up doing less overall. The bottom line is that our gas tanks have a leak in them that can't be plugged. And that leak means our energy drains fast and must be conserved and used for the important stuff before it's gone. That means the have-to stuff always takes precedence, and we rarely get to do the want-to stuff, and that takes a toll on our mental state. Okay, the third thing, the lack of motivation. Now, this lack of motivation is often the reason people call those with chronic illness or disability lazy or shiftless layabouts or ruggedly handsome homebodies, but that's not what we are, except for that last one, which may slightly resemble me. We aren't lazy. It's just that the mental toll that chronic fatigue takes is kryptonite for motivation. In fact, even just the dread of knowing how much energy you're going to have to expend is enough to prevent you from even trying. Yeah, it's that visceral. Personally, this is the one that really gets me. This is the one that really sticks it right up my, right, right up my kryptonite hole. Anyway, it's as if your chair or your bed is the center of a black hole and the suck is unavoidable. It puts you in so hard a position that it's impossible to fight. You just want to stay there and binge all four seasons of anything like Money Heist on Netflix. That black hole suck, that lack of motivation, it also makes you say things you never thought you'd say like, well, I can smell me, but I don't think other people can smell me yet, so... I'm going to risk one more day without a shower. Yeah, it's not pretty. It's not pretty. <sighs> Unfortunately, that little voice is always in the back of your head and it gets louder and louder. You know your articles won't write themselves. You know your pets won't feed themselves. You know your groceries won't shop themselves. Actually, tiny annoying voice in my head. Groceries kind of do shop themselves right now. Whatever, shut up. <laughs> so, what do we do? You reach down to that area of yourself where you store your reserve of resolve and you get up and you do as much as you can. Make no mistake though, it takes a mental fortitude on the scale rarely seen to beat that lack of motivation and sometimes you just don't want to fight every minute of every day and that's okay. Oh boy. I hope this helps people to understand just what someone who is chronically fatigued goes through because it's not just being sleepy. It's, oh, well... Boy, again, it looks like my RA is acting up and my knees are swollen and they hurt bad. That means physical pain and that requires emotional fuel and mental toughness. So I'm going to go ahead and say that's a double whammy. So that's seven more pounds in the bag. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, so as I was saying... It's not just being sleepy or lazy or apathetic or that we don't want to be a good friend or that we want your graduation party to suck because we forgot to call the bakery and have them take off the with honors part. No, it's just that sometimes we only have a small amount of energy to expend in a day and by the time it's gone, we are done mentally and physically. The worst part is that unlike most people who can recharge with a coffee or a quick nap or drugs, not drugs, not drugs, uh, 
The only thing that will work when the leaky gas tank refills is sleeping till the next day. That's it. There is no other way for us to get more fuel. Now, a lot of us push past the point where we're out of gas and we basically borrow energy from coming days. But the problem with that is like anytime you borrow anything, it costs you. In other words, your body's a loan shark and a real nasty one too. And if you push past empty and borrow energy from your own future, you spend three days paying it back instead of one. And you feel like you got kneecapped by a shyster. But stuff's got to get done because we have no choice. So just to make sure, let's add in another five pounds because at the end of the day, things always get more difficult and that's fatigue. So let's see what the tally is. Hmm? All this extra weight I'm carrying around, I think comes to about 32 pounds. I can't even lift it anymore. I'm just gonna have to hold it in front of me. Imagine doing this all day and the weight keeps piling up and piling up. By 2 p.m. you'd be hunched over. It'd be so heavy and that's the best way I can illustrate chronic fatigue to anyone who hasn't experienced it. Yeah, try dragging around this bag of dumbbells all day and getting everything done. Yeah, you're gonna feel it like I am now. End of story. Look, I hope this video helps some of you to show others what it's like to live with fatigue. Next time maybe we'll do regular programming again. Maybe Corona, I don't know. We'll see how the week goes. But in the meantime, remember, this bag. Oh, and by the way, on another take, I dropped the weight right on my foot. So I am really going to feel this tomorrow. So please, for my sake, be kind, rewind, and keep on keeping on. And we'll talk soon <laughs> once I recover. Get this off of me.